Pam. I am the re- director of marketing at Flourish. Uh, before that, I was at Confident Cannabis. I bring to the cannabis industry traditional marketing from the book publishing industry. I am going to go ahead and um, present from a slide deck. All right, you guys should be seeing that now, and I will kind of leave it minimized so I can also check in and make sure on the the chat here. Um, We're going to go over using data and automation to scale your plant touching business with marketing, but these same steps apply to whether you're applying KPIs to yield or your sales engine, whether you see, want to see if one product is outselling another so that you know to increase the, the output there. So the first thing we need to talk about is attribution. There are a lot of ways to, to track the success of your marketing or your products or anything else you want to be tracking. Um, Here we're going to talk about the Google URL builder because it's a free service. Google Analytics is a free service, and these are a great way to start attributing, um, tracking your goals. So a UTM is just the URL that you have modified so that it goes into Google Analytics and you can track by campaign. We'll get into that a little bit later, but you're going to add a campaign source a campaign medium, and a campaign name. And this goes, again, to other KPIs you're tracking. If you're tracking your, uh, you're turning some great weed into a nice vape car and you want to track the yields, you're going to use a track and trace system to keep a history of what you did, what the machine was running at, whether you were using butane or water-soluble, um, how much product you put in to make the isolate. All of these things can be tracked. And at the end of it, you can look at the data and see what you've been doing yield-wise. If the yield changes when you switch a variant, does it go up or down? And all of these are ways to think about getting the most out of your product before sales. Uh, for the UTM, the marketing piece of it, the source is where your, your data is coming from. Like if you're sending out a newsletter, your medium is going to be whether you're putting that newsletter out on via your email or you're taking the link to the web-based piece of it and putting it out on LinkedIn. And your campaign name is however it works for you. I like to put the year, the month, and a little description of what I'm putting out. For example, uh, 2021 for tokativity event would be my UTM if I were talking about this. So a regular UTM will look like what you're seeing there on the left. This is a blog post uh, that we posted last week, uh, Can Virginia Be the East Coast Golden Triangle? But when I send that out, I want to know who's clicking it from where. So I'm going to make different UTMs for each channel that I am putting this out on. Uh, For here, you can see that my source is a LinkedIn ad. Um, So in this instance, I created an ad on LinkedIn. And my medium was social media. And my campaign was 2021 Virginia blog. So when I go into Google Analytics, if that's what we use at Flourish, we use HubSpot. I can look for 2021 VA blog, and then I should be able to see all my campaigns, whether it's my LinkedIn ad, my LinkedIn social post, my Instagram, my blog, through the email. Every place that I put this out, every channel has its own link. And yes, it is absolutely as annoying as it sounds to create each and every one of those links and make them trackable and make sure that you're posting the right link to the right channel. I even go as far, uh, I know that my sales team is going to use these links to share it on their social or or to their clients, their prospects. So I'll make each one of them their own little UTM and I can track 
who's been clicking it from our sales team, um, either sales team wise or individual member. It depends on how granular that you really want to go with that. But now you have this like really long and ugly link and you don't really want to be pasting that everywhere and, and people then can just rip the back end off. Then you lose all your attribution. You can, go, you can use Bitly Pro or Bitly Free. I prefer Bitly Pro because it allows you to buy a small domain. Um, for example, at Confident Cannabis, we had uh, GoCana, uh, GoCan.na. So it will be GoCana and then whatever I put at the back. <clears throat> so you're able to create your own links and send those out. People do not see the really long, ugly uh, URL. And you're getting some extra brand power in there. Um, if you have great engineers, they can build you your own really quick URL service through Chrome extensions and other cool things. But for me, Bitly Pro works fine. Bitly Free is also fine. You can still put the end at the, uh, it would just be bit.ly slash 2021 Virginia blog or whatever you want to put in there to make that UTM shorter. So now you've got your content, you've got your tracking URLs for all your channels that you're going to put it out on. But what, what now, now, okay, what do you do? So goal setting. So when you look at everything you've done and everything you've pieced together, you're going to decide what is something that I can track and that I can control and what is a realistic goal. If you're not setting realistic goals, then this part isn't as fun because when you start diving into the data, you won't see results. But for me, if I'm going back to my Virginia blog post, I would like to see at least 600 unique people reading it the first week. So that would be one, one KPI. Then I'm looking at those 600 people that came in. My secondary KPI is I would like at least 60 of those 600 people to fill out our request a demo form. They want to learn more about track and trace. And hopefully, if I'm going to get more granular, I'm writing about Virginia. Virginia is going to legalize. They're going to get started in 2024. They already have medical. I'm hoping that out of those 60 people that filled out the demo form, that at least 10 of them are from Virginia and are going to be asking about our unique integration with the PMP system for medical that's going on now. We don't know what the program in Virginia is going to look like, but we know that we're going to be ready. So we want to start having these conversations with people early. When you're goal setting for outside of marketing KPIs, if you're trying to increase your yield, then you want to do that incrementally. If you want the campaign that you just did to result in sales for your product, then you're going to be looking at how many people were driven to your product page. From that product page, how many people then clicked over to a dispensary? And if you link with your sales partners, if you, if you link with an API, you can track what the people did there. Did they buy your product or did they bounce off your page? And those things are very important. I find in cannabis that we get really caught up in the, the vanity statistics. Uh, this post got 7,000 Instagram likes, but how many of those Instagram likes turned into sales? There's absolutely no way to know. If you're pulling down sales info, then you, you want to be super sure that those sales resulted from that. Uh, for example, if you use LeafLink, <clears throat> Uh, a few of the track and trace systems that handle your sales orders are integrated with LeafLink. So if they, you go from your track and trace system over into LeafLink and the sales order is created there, it'll come back into your track and trace system. Your track and trace system then is your one true source of data for those sales and the life cycle of your product. So setting the KPIs to something that is obtainable is important, but it's also important not to get caught up in the vanity statistics they are super fun um i really love saying 
uh, my CEO Colton is going to be in Marijuana Ventures 40 Under 40. Um, that is super awesome. Will that result in any demo request form fill out? Probably not. So the only goal that I can set there is people read it. That's awesome. Um, but it's not going to result in anything that can actually help us scale our company. When you're setting your goals, and I know I talked a little bit about it, you have to, whether you're using KPIs or OKRs or any other type of goal setting, you have to look at the entire campaign. When you build your campaign, you know that you have this product that you want to sell, this piece of content that you want to link back and, and become demo requests, uh, this incredible program that you're sponsoring that you want people to sign up for, job candidates, literally anything. You're going to sit there and your top of mind thing is what you want to do. I want people to fill out my demo request form. So how am I going to get to that page? I'm going to write a blog about Virginia, and I hope that I get Virginia people to that demo form. I've written my blog. I've created all my UTMs. I know which channels I'm going to send it out with. I know what I'm going to say for each channel. Uh, Twitter is a bit more fun. Uh, Facebook is still a little fun. LinkedIn is very serious. Uh, we're serious professionals. Um, Instagram, you can't link unless you've got over 10,000 followers. So you're going to tell people to go visit your link tree in your bio. Um, Instagram's not great for cannabis. We can't really do a lot there. We can't link to product. Even if we can link to product, we risk our account. Um, Instagram, I feel, is very much like PR, thought leadership. There's not a lot you can do that or really track. But you still put it on your channels list. You've got your blog as a channel, your email newsletter as a channel, anywhere else that you can put that. So you've got your channels. You've got your UTMs, you've got UTMs for your salespeople, your marketing people, uh, your CEO, if he's someone who puts things out on LinkedIn and on his own and it does really well. So you defined your channels. You look at what your channels have done for you in the past and you create your KPIs or your OKRs or what you want to happen. So I know that in the past I wrote a blog post about the actual golden triangle and that brought in the first week about 850 unique users. Of those 850, 13 of them filled out our demo form. So that wasn't a really good, it wasn't a really good conversion. So what did I do? On that post, I wasn't very clear about where to go to get a demo or how to find out more things about the company while you're reading this educational piece. So in this new post, I'm going to be very clear about those things. So I'm hoping to take my conversion rate up from the 13 people up to 60 people. And then I'm hoping of those 60 people, since this is Virginia specific, 10 of them are from Virginia. So those you're, you're setting a realistic goal there, one that you can actually reach. And this is the first week goal. When you're planning campaigns, you're going to plan them for the life of the campaign. How many people you want to see it the first week, the first month, the second month in the third month. I usually plan my campaigns at the beginning of a quarter and execute them throughout the quarter for different effects. So you've done everything, you've planned, you did your KPIs, and now you're pushing out through your channels. Now you need to track your campaign. You can start tracking immediately. As soon as you pushed it out on the channels, uh, people will start clicking. Things will start happening. And living inside of your Google Analytics and watching what's coming through, you can make a quick adjustment if you need to. If you realize people are clicking through for Facebook and then immediately bouncing and you're seeing the same thing um, from your email, people are clicking into your content and then bouncing almost immediately, then something in the first portion of your website is turning them off pretty fast. It. Do you have a pop-up that's coming up and interrupting them? Uh, do you is your header too big and the content they have to scroll for it? So what are these things that you're looking for? And you make adjustments to hit the KPIs or your OKRs, whatever you call them, 
to realize your goals. Living inside of Google Analytics will help you realize I need to change this and I need to change it fast. And that's part of scaling. And you, I see a lot in the cannabis business, people scale on feeling and on gut. And while that is a lot of it, you know when you're doing well and when you're doing the right thing. Backing up that feeling with this type of data leads to, to less risk. You're, you're taking less risk and risk management should be part of your company KPIs. Iteration. So you, you've you done a whole three months of campaigns. Um, you, you finished out Q1 just now. I just finished my Q1 numbers. And I realized that most of, most of all, I hit what I wanted to hit. But there were a few things that did not hit. I didn't get to do all the social campaigning that I wanted. Um, my team is pretty small, but we're scrappy. And it really resulted in all of my campaigns falling a little flat. We hit our numbers, but what could we have done if we had done the extra piece? <clears throat> so you're looking at your data from the quarter. You can iterate on the fly, like we were talking about. It's very important to do so. But until you have three months of data, you really do not know what you're looking at until you can look at the whole piece of the of the pie and put it all together in your head. So I know now that this month, I'm going to do all the things that this quarter, I'm going to do all the things that I did last quarter. I'm going to host the webinars. I'm going to write the emails. I'm going to engage our clients with monthly product updates. I'm going to do all of these things that I did, but I need to add that extra element that was missing to actually make it really shine. Iteration is what leads to scaling. You will find all kinds of data partners that you can partner with. Um, I recently uh, talked to Happy Cabbage. Uh, they're super cool. They seem to have a program that watches your sales data and manages your, your customers B2C. Um, and they show you when you should use SMS targeting for those people, when they're at risk, when they're going to churn, when they're not going to buy your product anymore. Um, when they're super happy with you and your product and all of these things. Um, for example, Flourish tracks most everything. Um, what we don't build, we we kind of integrate with lots of partners. We integrate with LeafLink so you can track your sales, metrics so you can make sure you're compliant, but also all of that data is pulling through your lab tests and all of that. Um, adding in someone like Happy Cabbage to to look over that customer portion would be super cool. Um, and having all of that at the end of the day in one dashboard, whether it, it's Flourish or another track and trace or another type of system altogether. Um, like I said, I came from, from book publishing. We have BookScan that brings us all the book data into one place and I can see how many copies were sold across ebook, audiobook, print, uh, indie bookstore, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh, used to be Borders, all those things. So wherever you can consolidate that data that is not personal spreadsheets, it, it's it's really good for your business. All the all the businesses that I personally know that have scaled have some sort of system in place to track their KPIs and they can see immediately when there is a problem beginning. If you're making four different types of, of vape cartridges and what you're not realizing because your, your data is segmented in different spreadsheets and there's several people kind of working in silos and th that data is not coming together, you may be missing out that you have one really popular product, two that do really well, but maybe one of them is not doing well. You could stop making that one, increase production on the top one, and then kind of bring it all, the, the two mids, scale them as, as you wish. So making sure somewhere, anywhere, with, build it yourself, somewhere, HubSpot, anywhere to put all your data in the same place so that you can look over it over and over again and check it all of the time is super important. And now I am really hoping 
that you guys have questions because I got to use this super rad MC hammer. Actually, I hope now that you are all as old as me and uh, <laughs> get my MC hammer joke reference here. No questions about attribution, URL building, bringing it into uh, bringing it all into uh, Google Analytics or one system to rule them all. Awesome. Well, you can reach me lots of places: Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I uh, should have put my email there, but it is pfo at flourish software dot com um if you guys are building a campaign or or literally anything and and you ever want to know about any of this please email me i think it's super important in especially the cannabis industry for women to support other women i um i happen to bring these skills i am learning different skills from different women in the cannabis business every day i personally am living in virginia now we moved from California last year, and in July, I am going to be learning how to grow my own cannabis so I can stop buying it off a dude named Bobby at Sitco. Um, so I'm going to be asking a lot of questions about growing and trimming and uh, doing this at home for myself. Um, so please, like I said, uh, reach out any of these places or email me at pfo at flourish. Uh, flourish software.com and we can uh we can hang out and talk about all of these things um i do have an arrow garden so i'm hoping to start from seeds with uh with the arrow garden and go from there i've been um it's actually really ridiculous i've been uh practicing with some like plants that are like kind of hard to take care of like nerve plants and, and things like that so that i can uh I can get ready for uh for growing cannabis, but uh, I'm actually Heather. I'm actually in Williamsburg, so I'm very near the the Chesapeake Bay watershed. But I I am also like hoping this is is valuable for you guys. I can uh always talk more about how we track, and I can show you some uh some of our campaigns, what they look like and how I track them. Um, we use HubSpot, which has been a learning curve for me as well. Oh, yes, the Navy. Yep. Yeah, uh, Nakaya, uh, on a smaller scale, is is that's perfect. You can use it just to make sure if you don't want to scale, if you're not ready to scale, uh, you don't ever want to become big business. That is cool, too. You can use this stuff just to make sure nothing's changing for the worse. Um, I, I also, uh, I track everything just to make sure that we're plodding along, uh, whether it's my, uh, my book business, which I still have, or my, my uh, day job here in cannabis. Awesome. And like I said, I hope to be able to uh, to reach out to you ladies when I start home growing. And I, I hope you will reach out uh, if you ever have any uh, any kind of uh, marketing questions. Um, it's uh, basically the thing that. Yeah, it's, it's hard when you're still in the gray area, Roxy. Uh, if you email me, we actually have a client who. Um, we supported while they were gray in California and uh, the couple years it took them to purchase that license and uh, get back um, into the non-gray area. It's a, it's a unique process. Um, it's not the most fair process, especially, I don't know where you're at Roxy, but in California where I lived for the past 12 years, it was pretty, uh, Pretty not great, especially Southern California. Um, 
pretty hard to get those licenses and the prices that you have to pay for them are astronomical. Heather, yeah, I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna have to figure out where to buy the seeds. Um uh, yeah, no nothing state. You guys have a lot of hemp going on, Roxy, but Yep. Yeah, I grew up on the Tennessee, Virginia border. My brother's actually living in Johnson City, Tennessee. Yeah, it's it must be nice. I uh I really miss uh being able to go to the dispensary and uh pick up what I need, whether it was clones or <laughs> or products, but Oregon, uh, Oregon's great. When I worked at Confident Cannabis, uh, I was in Oregon quite a lot. We had a, a lot of clients there, and we had an office there in Portland. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're in the same boat, Roxy. We are definitely in the same boat. I, uh, I'm here a year now, actually, in Virginia. Um, after living in California for 12 years, so I was very, very spoiled at how I got my products. Hey, Roxanne, I'm gonna have to hit you up because, like I said, I have the Aero Garden, but I'm probably gonna have to buy a uh, some grow lights and a grow light kit. All of that I am super familiar and okay with, but the part where it comes to uh, trimming and drying, I think I do not know enough about that, and I do not know how to set my own goals for yield. I can have four plants. Um, how how do you how can you, how do you how much does four plants actually give you? How do you know if you did a good job? How do you hand trim it? Um, and on all of those things, I'm going to be completely out of my element. So I'm hoping some of you ladies can help me there. And maybe I can help you with uh, with the other stuff, the nerdy stuff. If you haven't yet, I was just uh, on the main stage before my session uh, watching DJ Frenchie. And she was... Uh, she was pretty cool. Have you guys been over there yet? Well, that's good to hear, Roxy, because I don't think that I have much of a green thumb, but I'm, I'm going to try it if I can figure out where to get the clones. We're actually uh, in a camper this weekend. Um, it's my uh, anniversary weekend, and my husband's out riding his motorcycle while I do this. Uh, we already planned it when um when they asked me to join it, and I really, really wanted to join. That is a good book suggestion, Heather. I'm going to write that down really quick, actually. Um, I do really, I do really like to uh, have books to do things by. Thank you guys. I'm sure my husband was pleased when I told him I was working this weekend. I I tend to work a lot. It is my hobby. But now I'm I'm growing all these plants at home. I already had to give two to my mom uh to save from me. But the other like forty, they're all right. They're they're still alive. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and go check out um, the networking. Uh, the next session, I've lost it, um, is, oh, that looks great, uh, Black Women in Plant Medicine. So maybe I will see you guys there too. Thank you so much. Bye.